Welcome to My Forever Home, the podcast. I'm Frances Cosway and I've helped hundreds of people create forever homes. I can't wait to share the journey with you. So let's start. Hello everyone and welcome to the Kitchen Design Essentials season. Can't believe that we're at episode 38 of the um, Forever Home podcast. It's incredible that only in a couple of months um, since uh, I launched this podcast that um, we're getting such amazing feedback. And um, so I'm excited today to bring uh, the sixth episode in this particular season, which is the Kitchen Design Essentials. And today I'm going to be talking about benchtop criteria and materials. Now, last uh, episode um, that we did, the Kitchen Design Essentials, was episode 36. And that's where we talked about um, three key benchtop materials when I had guest um, Laura from Cosentino. And we talked about Decton, which is an incredible product, reconstituted stone, which is very, very popular, and natural stone, which is also really popular. So Laura and I chatted through um, those three materials. And today I'm going to be covering many other benchtop materials that are also a consideration. Some of them you'll be familiar with, some of them maybe not. And so um, you'll learn some new things today um, about benchtop materials for kitchens and other wet areas. I'm going to be talking about recycled glass, porcelain, paper rock, timber, solid acrylic surface, concrete, stainless steel and laminate. So as you can see, we talked about three last week and this week there are many more for me to chat through to you. I also want to talk to you about key criteria in choosing your bench top. We went through some of that last week and I just want to touch on that again and add a few other things in too, things that you need to consider and then I'm going to launch into all these other different materials and some of them are really exciting for me personally because they are super sustainable and for those who follow me regularly you know that I am a sustainable buff and um, I love it when um, new products come out that are awesome look great perform well but are also sustainable so let's just chat through firstly key criteria for choosing your bench top Uh, Budget was one we talked about uh, last week and um, that is definitely a consideration and you know you can want the most amazing product you like but if your budget doesn't allow for it then um, it's not going to be a consideration. Durability is a really important one. The type of cook you are is really important Um, and how else you're going to use your kitchen. And I sort of put those two together because it's not just how you cook, what you cook, how often you cook, um, but it's also how you use your kitchen in terms of the type of entertaining you do. For example, um, you know, do you do lots of um, big family gatherings? And I don't mean just for Christmas, but on a regular basis, um, whereby using your island bench as a uh, buffet, Um, area where people can you know help themselves and so forth is important whether there's a lot of homework that gets done at the bench whether there's a lot of casual eating whether there's lots of arts and crafts going on so they're all going to be big considerations for the actual bench top material material that you're going to use aesthetic is obviously a huge one how it fits into your home and also how that aesthetic is going to reflect the sort of kitchen that you have Other details that may be important to you, no joins may be really important. We've got a client at the moment and that is an absolute core criteria for him, no joins. So there's no point us going to him with reconstituted stone options and, um, you know, other and and Decton options because we know that the slab size that he needs for his island bench is three and a half metres And so um, those standard slab sizes, which I'll talk about in a moment, are not going to be suitable. So if no joins is really important for you in your island bench, uh, you need to find out the slab sizes first. The thickness of your bench top, um, you know, thin is is very in at the moment at time of recording uh, in July 2020. However, um, if you want a really thick 
bench, you may be restricted by materials as well. Um, 40 mil is quite standard. 60 mil can be quite standard. Uh, in the 80s and 90s, particularly the 90s, we saw bench tops of 100 and 150 mil. Um, you're going to be restricted by the types of materials that can actually go to that sort of thickness. Maintenance. What sort of maintenance and ease of cleaning are requirements for you? If you want something that is um, just wiped down and you're done, then that is going to be a core consideration for the bench top that you choose. And also durability. If you've got something that's a little bit more uh, sensitive, uh, for example, some natural stones, which you talked about last week, can be quite porous. Uh, if you don't want to be sealing your bench top all the time uh, and worried about uh, it cracking or chipping, then the type of material that you use will be important as well. Now, as I just mentioned, material size, standard slab sizes, we talked about this last week, are anywhere between 2.8 and 3.2 metres long, and they're generally a metre to 1.2 metres wide. Um, so that is something to think about in terms of, um, you know, particularly your island bench. Um, if you've got a three metre island bench and your slab size is only 2.8, you're either going to have a join or maybe um, it's, you know, no big issue to then have your uh, bench top at 2.8 metres. The overhang. Um, so it's important on, um, you know, island benches that if you really want a bigger overhang for your stools to sit under, um, 300 tends to be, or anywhere between three and 400 is quite standard, but not all materials will allow their warranty to go beyond 300. So again, you need to think about um, what material and the warranty. So for example, Decton, it's a 300 millimeter overhang. It, they will not warranty it if it's going to be more than that. So check. Waterfall edges, really good for durability. Um, I find that when we're using uh, stone on, on the waterfall edges is where I should say that, sorry, so you've got the top and then the stone actually then goes all the way down the sides of your island bench, but also down the sides of your other benches too. Uh, it, it's great for durability. When you've got kids and they're knocking into um, the bench top all the time or the sides of the bench top, it, sometimes it's better then to have that, that um, durable top then also going down um, and running down the sides as well. Um, you know, how thick you want your bench top, I touched on just before, but, um, you know, you may like it thinner and have shadow lines so that you've got, um, it's really highlighting, um, you know, how thin that bench top is. Um, how thick that you want it, which as I was talking about before, when you're using a solid acrylic surface or a concrete, you've got no limit in terms of how thick it is because it uses a mould. Um, and then reconstituted stone, it may be that it's, you know, the standard size is 20 or 30 millimetres. And if you want it any thicker than that, then that's going to be joined together, mitered at the edges, and you've got a piece that's, um, you know, fixed to the face. All right. So they're things that you may want to talk about. They'll obviously be summarised in the show notes. Also wanted to talk now about the different bench top materials. That's what we're talking about, criteria and materials. So I'm going to pick up from where we left off from episode 36, which was part one of bench top materials. Now, there's a new-ish product that's available now, which is 100% recycled glass. I love this product. It's heat treated, it's compacted, and it looks like stone, but it's recycled glass. So obviously, that's a great sustainable story. It's, um, it's only available in limited colours at the moment. They're quite neutral um, and, and very palatable. Uh, but it really does look like a stone, but it's made out of recycled glass. It is more expensive, considerably more expensive than, say, a recycled um, stone. Uh, sorry, a reconstituted stone. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. Again, it'll come back to your objectives with your home. Um, if you've got sustainability as a core, core criteria, this is definitely going to be something for you. There's another product available which is 85% recycled glass and that is then binded with a bioresin. So the glass particles are visible, unlike the other one where it's 100% recycled glass. Um, the, um, the glass particles you can actually see, so you might have smaller chunks of glass, bigger chunks of glass. It almost looks like a terrazzo. It can be mixed colours. You might have one colour and, um, you know, you can make that a really big feature. Um, they can actually... Um, customize the colored glass that you'd like in there as well. So that's another product that's available. Porcelain, which has been around now for quite a while, is super thin, six millimeters thick, 
really, really, I mean, it, it can also be thicker than that. It's very, uh, very, very durable. It's resistant to wear and tear. It's stronger than granite. And it's sort of, and often is compared to a product like Dectum, which we talked about last week, um, but it's not made of minerals. It's actually a porcelain product. So they come in big slabs as well, and they can be tricky um, on site, but again, it's a very durable material. There's another product available called Paper Rock. That's actually the branded name as well, and that's layer upon layer of renewable paper, renewable, I should say, paper sources, and it's bonded with a resin and it's heat pressure cured. So it's remarkably strong composite material and it's suitable for wet areas. It's also sustainable and it's more cost effective than stone. So it's quite incredible when you touch paper rock. It's hard to believe that it's paper. Um, and there's actually two ways that you can get it. You can get paper rock ply, which has actually got ply underneath, and then the paper rock composite product is, is on top, almost like a veneer, um, so that you've got two types of products that you can use, and you've actually got the ply visible on the side. So that's obviously a different aesthetic, uh, but there's two types of products available in the paper rock range. Timber. Timber bench tops um, are sort of making a renaissance now. Obviously, they look amazing. They're sustainable. They're a natural product. What you do need to be mindful of is they often, there is quite a lot of maintenance with a timber bench top, generally speaking. It needs to be sanded, it needs to be sealed. However, we have actually found a product with Eco Timber where they apply a special sealer that does make it suitable for wet areas and it doesn't need the amount of maintenance that is normally required with a timber bench top. So we've had a lot of inquiries about timber bench tops and um, I absolutely love the look and if that's going to be the feature, they are really quite stunning. Um, sometimes you can just have it on the island bench and then have a stone or other, another material um, on your back benches so that your island bench really has that uh, timber feature. But again, there are ways and there are materials now available that enable it to be a little bit less maintenance than what it was traditionally uh, many years ago. Solid acrylic surface is uh, a fabulous product. Now that's commonly known as Corian and solid acrylic surface is the actual generic name and Corian is a brand name. Uh, the other brand uh, available as a solid acrylic surface that's quite popular is called High Max. Now that's made with a mold so it can be any shape or thickness. It's great for curves. You can have it backlit so it's illuminated if you're choosing it in a lighter colour. Um, the advantage with a solid acrylic surface is that there are no joins. So when you are after uh, something that is completely basically made to your specifications because it is made with a mould, um, then it's fantastic for, for that. You, you can have it curved, you can have it with no joins, they can make it as long, they can make it as thick as you like, as thin as you like. Uh, well, not talking six mil, but um, they, ca they can actually get it quite thin and has the technology to be able to have a charger inbuilt into the bench top. You see, basically just lay your mobile phone on that particular part of the bench top and it'll automatically charge it. It's repairable, it's non-porous and it's hygienic. So there's a lot of advantages with solid acrylic surface. It's huge in Europe and in England. It's not as popular here. I think it's getting a little bit more traction and really the differences between the, the, the different brands available is the colors that they have available. And you'll see that there's quite a, a different color range across the the different brands. Uh, great product, uh, the fact that it is repairable and you can basically buff out any scratches and so forth with um, you know, a product like Gumson. The lighter colours are more susceptible to, um, well, I'll, I'll flip that. The darker colours are more susceptible to the scratches being visible. If you're using a lighter colour, um, really the scratches are, um, are not really visible at all. So, And when I say scratches, I'm talking about surface scratches like you would just have in a normal reconstituted stone. It's just that when it's a darker material, those scratches seem to be more visible, just those, those surface scratches. But as I was saying, it is repairable. A little bit more expensive than... Um, a reconstituted stone, depending on what level of reconstituted stone uh, you're looking at, um, because it is, you know, it's basically custom made. Concrete falls into a similar category in terms of the fact that it is custom made. 
Uh, freeform concrete is often made on site. Again, it's made with a mould. Um, it can be any colour or shape. I've seen incredible concrete uh, bench tops in a pale pink. Absolutely stunning. Um, it's not, again, a super cost effective option, but if you're after a product that doesn't have any joins, again, it's a great one. It will chip or crack, um, but it can actually be fixed. It's very durable it's not completely stain resistant. So solid acrylic surface is a little bit more stain resistant. It's not porous where concrete, um, you know, it is sealed. Can look amazing. Um, and it is, it is, you know, more of that industrial look. It's a little bit more pared back. And I love the fact that you can have your basins uh, shaped out of it and made out of it as you can with solid acrylic surface. Uh, in my own home, I actually had a, um, an oval shaped sink uh, almost like a, um, it was wider at one end than the other, almost like a footprint. And I actually had that, uh, you know, made and, and as a uh, undermounted sink all in incorporated and integrated into the bench top. So those two materials allow you to do that. And it is a beautiful, seamless finish. Stainless steel is, is still very popular and for, you know, great reasons. It's antibacterial, it's stain resistant, hence why it's always in, um, you know, commercial use. It's heat and fire resistant, so you never have issues um, with pans or, or saucepans going onto that surface, just like Decton. It's very easy to clean. For those of you who, um, you know, don't like smears, uh, it may not be the product for you because unless you're using like a glass cleaner and you're actually cleaning it down, it will actually look like it's smearing. It can scratch. Again, they're surface scratches. Um, some people view that as being part of the nature of the product. Other people don't like seeing any visible scratches. I mean, they're sort of surface scratches again. Um, and that, you know, will obviously then determine whether that's the product for you. It's definitely not a cost effective option, um, but it's timeless. Um, you know, stainless steel was really big in the 90s. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a finish and also as a splashback um, but it's sort of making a resurgence again and I think because it is just such a classic product and it has so many advantages as well. Laminate is a more cost effective option um, you know we think about the 60s and we've got our you know bright orange and bright yellow um, bench tops but it has come a long way. In those instances, you know, they didn't have uh, preformed uh, tops, so they weren't all joined. And that meant that the water could get in uh, into those very little side areas. And then once water gets in and underneath the surface, it will actually then make that product expand. Uh, the particle board will actually expand. You can't actually have undermounted sinks with a laminate. So if that's a real core criteria for you, then laminate will not be the option. Um, it does come in a lot of finishes now, things like uh, stone looking finishes, concrete looking finishes, and some of these can look amazing. Um, and it's a really good product to use when um, budget is a consideration. You may have, for example, a stone or something in the kitchen, and then you may use laminate in, in your walk-in pantry or in your laundry uh, and those sorts of areas. So it can be used in combination with other surfaces throughout the home. It's not heat resistant and it can actually stain and it's definitely not water uh, proof when it does actually get into uh, the edges. However, um, that unless you're really, really, um, uh, it, it is very durable and unless you're really uh, rough or there are areas that uh, it can actually get in, then that shouldn't be a problem. Um, and as I was saying, you can't have an undermount uh, sink with it. So I think there are just so many choices for your bench tops. Um, if I'm just counting them up now, talked about 10 today and we talked about another three on the podcast uh, last week. So that's 13 different surfaces and bench tops that you can look into. And I, and I really would encourage you to do your research online. Um, you know, it's not, it, it, I think the fail safe option is people just look at reconstituted stone. But if you're looking at your objectives, you're looking at what you is important to you. You're looking at what sort of sustainable um, measures you may want to in, introduce into your home. There are so many other choices than just reconstituted stone or natural stone, which is almost like just the standard go-to. Um, so again, this is where an interior designer can help you assess 
what's going to be important for you um, and other considerations. I mean, that is what we're there for, to put things in front of you that you wouldn't normally gravitate to yourself. But, you know, by all means, you can go and research these sorts of materials yourself and there's always new things coming out. And I think that's one of the joys of my profession is learning about new materials and putting them in front of the clients and then going, wow, I didn't even know that existed. Uh, that's all we're here for. So, um, you know, have a look at these sorts of materials and, and you know, explore um, what you can actually use because there are so many different things available. Um, and so go back to the aesthetic, go back to your durability, go back to your budget, of course, the type of cook you are, how much of a feature do you want your island bench to be? It may be that you have one material on the island and then you have something else on the rear benches. That's definitely doable. Um, you know, we do that quite a lot. Um, because we're on the topic of kitchens, I certainly do not want to leave today without letting you know that uh, Thursday, and that is tomorrow, uh, if you're listening to this when this is released on Wednesday, the 29th, so tomorrow on the 30th of July, 2020 at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, I am running the Forever Home Kitchen Design Masterclass. And this is where I share loads of information about kitchen design, as much as I can heavily pack into um, one hour. And um, there's lots and lots of information that I share on that. So by all means, uh, join up. It's free. I normally charge for this event as we're in COVID lockdown. I can't run live events at the moment. It's normally a live event that I hold at the Cosentino uh, showroom. Uh, this is now free as a webinar. So please join me uh, on Thursday the 30th. You can register for this event at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au uh, backslash events. And that's where you'll see uh, the registration page. Um, so I certainly hope to have you on that uh, on Thursday. We've had an awesome response and um, that's certainly an opportunity for you to learn even more. And obviously I can show visuals because we're in a visual environment rather than just me talking about it on a podcast. Um, I also just wanted to let you know that um, there are a lot of blogs available on the website as well um, that we often have in the show notes. So have a look at the show notes. But if you just go to resources on the website and you'll go to blogs, there are lots and lots of um, blogs on there around kitchens, but lots and lots of other things as well. So if you're after specific information, um, definitely head over to our resources page um, on the website. There's lots of information there too. It's interesting. I actually had an architect contact us uh, this week. She wanted us to review her kitchen design. Um, she said, I know it's not quite right. I need an expert. I need an interior designer expert to come or to basically have a look at my kitchen design. Um, so even as an architect, she could see the value, obviously, in an interior designer being able to review her kitchen design. So you can definitely use us um, for that service as well. Not to mention the entire kitchen design and kitchen materials. Everything is available at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au. All right. Well, if I'm not going to see you tomorrow on Thursday, if you are listening to this on Wednesday, I will hear, see not see, but I will definitely be back here next week for the next episode of Kitchen Design Essentials. And next week, we're going to be talking about cabinetry materials. And again, there's so many different materials to consider. There's so many different materials that have really moved on over the years. And so they are definitely something to consider as part of your kitchen design. That's it for me this week. And I don't forget as well on Friday, the Your Forever Home line, Live has changed time. It's no longer 10 a.m. It is now 9.30 every Friday on Your Forever Home um, Facebook page and also on the White Pebble Interiors Instagram page. 9.30 every Friday. I'll see you then. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of My Forever Home. If you're ready to renovate or build a new home and you need help, to create a beautiful and functional forever home. You can book a chat with me directly at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au backslash chat. Have a great day.